The Zapotecs can be seen as successors of the Olmecs, one of the oldest Mesoamerican cultures. When people discuss the civilizations encountered by the conquistadors as they traveled across South America and Mesoamerica, they will always bring up the Inca, Maya, and Aztecs. These civilizations had large pyramids and structured societies that the conquistadors studied, and history has assigned them a pivotal role in growth and development during pre-Columbian times. However, they were not the only civilizations. Less well known are the Zapotecs. Even though they are obscure today, they lived, thrived, and became a civilization of interest to the conquistadors. They did not leave behind the same massive structures and temples as other civilizations, so they have not left behind much for those interested in learning about their culture. The journals and letters of the conquistadors show how intensely interested Europeans were in the complex system and relationships of Mesoamerican civilizations. While much of what is known today comes from these biased journals, archaeologists have spent decades trying to uncover the treasures and remains of this once great civilization. The Valley of Wizaca, where the Zapotec civilization thrived, was as much a testament to their intellect and abilities as it was a critical component in forming who they were. While societies in Europe and North Africa developed around fertile areas where water was plentiful, the Zapotecs opted for safety, settling in a region that was easier to fortify and defend. The rise of the Zapotec civilization at Monte Alban began the shift from a minor culture into something more substantial and innovative. Archaeologists cannot say for sure when the nomads finally settled down in one location, but early agriculture gave the people a new way to live. Before 1700 BCE, the ancestors of the Zapotecs had become farmers, though they tended only to grow what was needed to survive on their own. Providing enough food to feed an entire community was still not something that most groups of humans practiced. A farmer grew only enough food to feed his family, and others were left to fend for themselves even if they could not produce as much food as they needed. Between 1700 BCE and 1200 BCE, the farmers began to band together to provide support and assistance to an increasingly larger population. By living together, people provided each other safety from predators and other tribes. Because of the shift in thinking, the point of agriculture began to shift too. While it is not sure why the early Zapotecs decided to start focusing on growing maize, there is adequate evidence the shift occurred after they began to live together in larger groups. There are remains of the early tools, including pottery, that showed that the early Zapotecs had shifted from their early days to the more complex village structure. Over the centuries, they moved away from autonomy and adopted divine hierarchies based on two critical entities, sky and earth. Divine attributes turned leaders into nobles, who were exalted and distinguished. The roots of what would become a dominant civilization in the region came from the area where the people decided to settle. Their first significant city was San Jose Magote, but it proved less than ideal because the early Zapotecs were constantly at war with their neighbors in that area. With much of the best land already occupied, in about 500 BCE, the Zapotecs decided to move. They opted for an elevated location at the top of one of the mountains, which enabled them to keep an eye on approaching travelers or hostile neighbors. The new city was Monte Alban, and it was nestled in the Valley of Wazaka. Like all civilizations, the boundaries and borders of the Zapotec civilization shifted and changed over time. In the beginning, the Zapotecs were divided into three groups based on where they resided. The Valley Zapotecs lived in the Valley of Wazaka, which became the heart of the civilization. The second group is the Sierra Zapotecs, which resided north of the valley. The third group was the Southern Zapotecs. Despite the name historians and archaeologists have given them, the southern Zapotecs lived to the south and the east of the valley. Their area was around the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. Many cities and towns were essential to the culture. There were three capitals during Zapotec history, San Jose Magote, Monte Alban, and Mitla. However, the cities of Dainzu, Lembetieco, Yagul, El Palmillo, and Zachila played vital roles in the development and expansion of the Zapotec Empire. After the Zapotecs had established the thriving city of Monte Alban, they began to conquer many of their neighbors by overpowering them with superior military power. Then, because they had a larger population, the Zapotecs easily absorbed the smaller villages into their culture. Often, they would focus on peaceful means of bringing villages and peoples into their civilization, such as arranged marriages, 
and offering the use of their more advanced technologies to the less developed neighbors around them. Whether out of fear or an interest in joining a more prominent defender, the civilizations around Monte Alban were incorporated into the Zapotec culture. Over time, their influence stretched far beyond Monte Alban. It is hard to know precisely how vast the empire was because the Zapotecs did not keep borders the same way Europeans did. Civilizations blended, with people from different cultures living together within the boundaries. It was challenging to remain a small independent state or city with so many competing civilizations trying to expand. However, the major cultures worked together as much as they fought against one another. The relationship between the Zapotecs and the Teotihuacan, a nearby civilization, was largely positive. One of the exceptions was the Aztec civilization, a neighbor to the north of the Zapotecs that was more dominating than the other cultures in the area. Scholars refer to Zapotec history in five phases. Monte Alban phases 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The first phase lasted roughly 300 years, from 400 BCE to 100 BCE. Life was a struggle during the early history of the city, which would eventually become the capital of an entire civilization. The rainfall was negligible, so the people needed to ensure famine would not be a greater enemy than the civilizations they had encountered before they moved to the area. There was a good reason why this region had not been populated before the Zapotecs arrived. One of the most prominent features of the Valley of Wizaca is its surrounding mountains. Visiting the site of Monte Alban provides a sense of what it must have been like for the original settlers in the region. It is difficult not to feel isolated, and the remoteness complicated trading. For a people who had been in perpetual war, though, isolation was welcome. Phase 2 was a shorter period lasting from about 100 BCE to 100 CE. But it was a time of rapid growth and development for Monte Alban. With the borders of their capital secure, religion, art, and innovation rapidly expanded. It also marked a time when the Zapotecs began to incorporate a broader range of areas from the towns and villages near Monte Alban. Much of the expansion was achieved through military might, not political savvy. Also, like the Romans, the Zapotecs allowed those they conquered to retain some level of autonomy. The third period lasted from 200 CE to 900 CE, which proved to be a time of military might and the centralization of power around the capital. There was no natural separation of their religious and political structures, but these two power structures were each large enough to require distinct capitals. Over the 700 years of Phase 3, Monte Alban became the largest human settlement in the region. It is estimated the city may have been the home to over 25,000 people during this phase. The Zapotecs also included more than 1,000 settlements as part of their empire. By the end of this phase, the city was in decline as the people became complacent and their ideas began to stagnate. While Monte Alban would still be a significant city for the Zapotecs, it ceased to be the capital around 700 CE. Mitla would become the empire's center although it would never be quite as large or as influential as Monte Alban was at its peak. Monte Alban's significance waned in the fourth phase, from 900 to 1350, as Mitla attracted the upper echelons of Zapotec society. By this time, the civilization had extended itself too far and had reached a tipping point. Unable to maintain its once dominant capital, the Zapotecs began to lose control over regions on their borders. The last phase of Monte Alban lasted for less than 200 years, from 1350 to 1521. By this point, the city no longer enjoyed the power and innovation of its past. When the Zapotecs accepted their defeat at the hands of the warring Aztecs by the early 1500s, they were still somewhat independent. The conquistadors arrived before the Zapotecs had disappeared, and their existence was of interest to the Spanish. Having been around far longer than the Aztecs, the Zapotecs had a structured society familiar to the Spanish. They could draw comparisons between the aging empire and their own experiences, which was challenging to do with the Aztecs. The arrival of the conquistadors helped maintain a record of the existence of the Zapotecs and kept the civilization from immediately disappearing into oblivion. However, there is no doubt the arrival of the Spanish also signaled the end of the declining civilization. Hernán Cortés arrived in Mexico in the early 1500s, soon after the end of the war between the Zapotec and Aztec empires. Following the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs, the Zapotecs were hopeful it would mean a return to their original way of life. The Spanish conquistadors were impressed by the organization of the Zapotec society and religion. 
They frequently compared the Zapotecs to their royal dynasties and the Roman Catholic Church in their writings. The Spanish had two periods when they questioned the Zapotecs, in 1578 and 1581, and even engaged the Zapotec king, Cosi Hopi, the last ruler of his dynasty. They inquired about his idolatrous religion and practices. Later, the ruler would be baptized and renamed Juan Cortes. The Spanish understood or perhaps misunderstood the ideas and descriptions that Cosi Hopi relayed, creating nearly as many questions as they resolved. The Zapotec Empire fell after the arrival of the conquistadors. There are different theories on what caused the decline. The diseases brought by the Spanish took a significant toll on the Zapotecs, just as European illnesses negatively affected natives in North and South America. Given the size of the Zapotec Empire, it is inconceivable that disease wiped out the entire nation. However, the diseases probably did cause severe problems for the more populated areas because there may not have been enough people left to continue with vital functions within the society, such as food production. Some historians and archaeologists believe the empire fell to infighting as different pieces broke away to rule themselves. It would have been impossible for the nation to re-emerge after losing so many areas that have been crucial to maintaining the kind of social structure it had before that period. Also, losing the king would have been a critical blow to their religion. If he was the descendant of the gods and chose to turn away from them, the people of the civilization no longer had the foundation for the hierarchical society that had dominated their lives. Many former Zapotec people moved on and started new lives under a new structure. Some of them disappeared, joining other societies or trying to live in areas where they could not survive. Some moved on and created little pockets that kept some of the ways of their ancestors. These people persisted through the centuries and still speak a dialect descended from the Zapotec language. Some of the knowledge of their ancestors has been recorded, but much of it has been lost. Myths and stories have survived, but they have changed over time, so they do not entirely align with the recordings of the conquistadors. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Zapotecs, check out our book, Zapotec Civilization, a captivating guide to the pre-Columbian cloud people who dominated the Valley of Oaxaca in Mesoamerica. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.